In this video, we're going to talk about the key to great screenwriting, and this goes far beyond character, plot, dialogue, things like this. It's something that most screenplays that I read do not have, and this is really the difference between the pros and the not yet pros. And to tell you about this key to great screenwriting, I need to talk about my experience in an acting class and my epic failure. <laughs> Here in Los Angeles, I went to a weekend acting seminar put on by Tom Todoroff. He's a producer, director, actor, writer, and athlete who's trained actors around the world for more than 30 years. Now, I did not go to this to try to become an actress, because I ain't. I went because someday I want to direct and I want to know the needs of actors. And I also think it really helps to understand actors when you're writing your script, writing characters, knowing what they're looking for. So I'll do other videos about what I learned from that. But at this particular seminar, I went as an observer, right? I'm just going to watch because I'm not an actress. Now, the first day was great. It's everything I could have expected and more. Tom was dropping wisdom bombs about life and acting right and left. Things like, I pay for my mastery of denial. The price of nice is astronomical. Acting is the seemingly invisible art of relaxation under extraordinary circumstances. So it was amazing. Now, the second day, I go to check in and they ask me, we had some people drop out. Do you want to do cold readings? And I thought, oh, hell no, because I don't know how to do cold readings. I've taken a couple improv classes. I've taken maybe like four acting classes. I have no idea. I'm sure there's plenty of things I don't know. And I thought that would be an epic failure. So run from that. I scurried away and sat in my seat. And then I thought, wait a second. This is a great opportunity. Not only am I going to get to do something that is highly valuable and I could learn from, I absolutely could fall on my face and fail miserably. That's awesome. You don't often get opportunities to fail and don't run from those. Sometimes it is good to fail because then you're not so afraid of it because no matter what you do, and no matter how good you are at it, sometimes you are going to fail. And the more you can get comfortable with the failure, the more you can just charge forward. So I thought, this is awesome. I'm going to fail. Let's do it. So I went and got my pages, my sides, whatever you call them. And I got a scene partner. Now to make this even more intimidating, I was not only going to have to do a cold reading in front of an audience, everyone who's there, and the acting coach who's probably going to tell me all the things that I'm not doing right. It was also set up as a little competition. There were three pairs that were all given the same scene, and the audience was going to vote afterwards to say who got the job. So I could have total failure like thrown in my face. Now, of course, since I'm doing this to fail, I'm like, bring it on. Let's fail big. So I get the sides and I'm working on this with my acting partner and she's lovely and knows more than I do. And I'm doing what I know to be good acting, which is being in the moment, not trying to plan ahead what you're going to do. Just let the moment take you and to actually listen to your scene partner. So we're going through the lines and I was also worried about not memorizing the lines. But after a while, when my scene partner and I were doing this, I could remember the lines. So I thought, all right, this is good. I'll remember the lines. And I thought our scene felt pretty good. I liked the scene. I liked my character. I got to get all upset about something and that was fun. So I thought, you know what? This is good because sometimes when you go and you try to fail, maybe you don't. So you shouldn't necessarily expect that you're going to fail. So then it was time to go up and do our scenes and we were last. So the first pair went up there. They did the same scene that we had and they were pretty darn good. So then, okay, I'm getting a little nervous. What if I choke? What if something horrible happens? Second pair goes up there. They also did really well. So now I'm getting really nervous. What if I choke? What if I freak out? Go up on the stage and we do our scene and it didn't quite feel as good as our practice because I was a little nervous, but it was actually pretty good. I thought, look at that. Sometimes you might surprise yourself and not fail when you think you're going to. So then it was time for the judging, right? Every pair got up there, all three pairs, and he asked the audience, okay, acting pair number one, who votes for them? Most of the hands went up, and this was not us. And I thought, ooh, 
okay, we certainly didn't get the majority, but maybe some, not too bad. Second pair, he said, who votes for the second pair? Most of the rest of the hands went up. I thought, ooh, <laughs> something happened here. Then he said, who votes for pair number three, which was me. And it's like two hands went up. And I thought, all right, something went horribly, horribly wrong. Because from my perspective, it wasn't too bad. I was feeling it. We were interacting with each other. It had a vibe. I wasn't doing it the same way every single time. I was letting the scene take me away. What was it? that I was not doing. This would be the wisdom bomb from Tom. Aim your heart at the one you want to connect with. I'm going to say that again just to make sure you absorb it. Aim your heart at the one you want to connect with. So what was I not thinking about? I was in the moment. I'm connecting with the scene partner. I was not for a second thinking about the audience, and they were right there in the stands watching. Was I thinking about their experience? Was I trying to connect with them at all? No, nothing, zero, zero. I was doing my entire scene like this, aimed at my scene partner. I'm thinking about her. I'm thinking about my character. I'm thinking about what's going on in the scene, completely ignoring audience here. What if I did this video like this? So today we're going to talk about the key to great screenwriting. Not so good, right? Same damn information, same things I'm saying, but I'm aiming it at the window where the birds are chirping today and not at you, my intended audience. So this is so crucial for screenwriters to understand. Learn from my failure. We as screenwriters, we get so caught up in our characters and in the scene and in the plot and in the moment. And you can be completely doing everything right on that level. Have great characters, understand how they're feeling, really thinking about the plot. But if you are not at the same time thinking about where is the audience right now? What is the audience feeling? It can dismally fail and just because of that one thing. Now, I know a lot of screenwriters are not thinking about the audience when I read scenes like, hi, Bob. Hey, Mary, do you want some coffee? Oh no, I had some at the gas station. Do you want a donut? I just picked some up from Dunkin' Donuts. I know they're your favorite. No, maybe later because the audience is asleep in their popcorn. So that means the writer is so caught up in the characters and what they're feeling right now and what's going on, they're not thinking about, is the audience being entertained by this? Cause they're not. This also goes for scenes where characters are rehashing what we already saw. So there could be a big tornado that came and took the truck. And then the next scene is, Bob, you won't believe what happened. The tornado came, lifted that truck right up, took it away. I couldn't believe it. Never seen such a thing. What? Are you serious? The truck is gone? Yeah, the truck is totally gone. And the audience already knows that. And they're drooling in their popcorn asleep. And somebody's going to have to nudge them awake. So you've got to think about where the audience is. Is there something juicy and yummy and exciting for the audience? And this goes beyond just getting rid of small talk, food talk, rehashing scenes. This really goes into thinking about the way you construct your scenes. Are you giving the audience something meaty? So let's look at another example. Let's say you have your lead running into an old college buddy. And what you want to show here is that they were really great friends in college. You want to show that they have a close connection. You want to show that this is an amazing event. Oh, they get to interact with each other. So if you had them meet and like, hey, Bob, oh my gosh, Tim, I can't believe it's you. And then you show them at a bar, they're getting drunk together and they're like, hey, remember when we went streaking down the hallways? That was hilarious. Hey, hey, what about Mary, that girl you were dating? What happened there? Hey, I married her. What? Oh my gosh. So you might show people kind of reminiscing about the past and your intention might be, I'm showing how much these characters like each other. I'm showing that there's strong history here, but the audience could very well be really, really bored because have you ever gone to someone else's family reunion where they start telling little funny stories about the past? It's not that entertaining. Now, if you had them tell some amazing story like, 
Hey, remember that time we stole the mascot, the goat, and we couldn't find it? Whatever happened to that? Then maybe the audience can be like, what? Where did the goat go? It's a mystery. You know, you got a little mystery in there. Oh, what happened to the goat? Where was the goat? You could do something like that. But if you're just having them tell little stories like, hey, remember that time where we, you know, put ice in the lobby and had a slip and slide? Oh, that was hilarious. Not that entertaining. What else could you do instead that would take into account the audience and give them something kind of fun to invest in the scene? Well, you could have the lead all of a sudden be bumped into by this guy. And he would look at him and go, dude, watch where you're going. And then he could say like, who are you talking to? Come on, like whatever, let it go, dude. It's not a big deal, let it go. He's like, no, I'm not gonna let it go. You just ran into me. What the hell? What's your problem? And you could have them get into a fight. And then the second one of them rears their hand back, ready to punch the other one, you could have them come in and rope their arm around their neck and be like, oh, you and give them a little, what do you call this? I don't know, the new G, <laughs> what do you call that? Do that, like, ah, uh, I can't believe it's been so long. I haven't seen you. It's like showing an inside joke and having them play fight with each other would show how close they are without having to say a bunch of glory stories about the past. And the audience would have some conflict. They'd be like, oh, he's going to get into a fight. Yikes. And then you would have surprise reversal. Oh, wait, he's not going to get into a fight. He knows this guy. So you would have surprise. You would have conflict. You would have suspense. Is he going to hit him? Then you would, then you want to know how do these people know each other? Like what's going on? So you would have so much there. Then if you went, oh, Bob, hey, Tim, wow, I can't believe I'm seeing you for so long. Hey, remember, remember when we painted that dorm room in jelly? Oh, that was hilarious. Where you're not getting texture. You're not getting highs and lows and surprises and reversals and conflict and things like that. So this is something you have to think about when you're writing your scenes. Not only, and this is why screenwriting is so hard, not only what's going on with my characters, what's going on with my plot right now, what's going on with my scene, what's the tone, what information do I have to convey, but where is my audience right now? Am I giving them conflict and mystery and surprise and reversals? Am I giving them drama? Or are they just watching things happening and it's like, hmm, okay. Am I just giving them information? And that's not good. You don't want that. So here is your wisdom bomb from Tom that you can learn from my failure. Aim your heart at the ones you want to connect with. Don't forget about the audience. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe and check out courses on my website, Screenwriting Classes Online, and I will talk to you later.